Okay, guys, just like uh, <clears throat> just like you, I couldn't wait to uh, at least uh, test fire this thing out of the box, so I won't keep you waiting. Uh, a couple things I didn't mention in the introduction video. The barrel, I can't find any information about it. Uh, it's actual bore diameter. Um, measured it with my micrometers. It appears to be a 0 0.69, 0 0.68, 0 0.69. So it's pretty loose uh, when you're speaking uh, in regards to a Grimberg Jewel. Um, so take it for what it's worth. Again, this is just out of the box firing. I don't even have a hopper yet, so I'm just gonna be dropping a couple in there like that. <clears throat> uh, I'm not gonna waste a bunch of time, uh, you know, firing off a whole bunch of rounds. I'm gonna shoot enough that uh, I have a good um, idea what the stock velocity is out of the box on a standard 825 PSI, I have my on off on there, my GOG on off. I haven't, I haven't shot this, so <clears throat> I'm gonna shoot a couple of drops of oil in the uh, ESA. Before I thread my tank in here. I'm doing a little different perspective this time. Uh, I don't know, just because. Come on, there we go. Okay, so my understanding is I have to cock. So there is a safety on this marker. So safety's on. Uh, is I have to cock it first before I air it, otherwise I'm going to lose air down the barrel. So I'm not going to caulk it. I'm just going to crack my valve and see uh, see what happens. Obviously there's no rounds in there. I don't have a hopper. So let's just see what happens here. No, it didn't. You probably couldn't hear that on camera, but so I heard it air up. Um, but it didn't just lose air down the barrel. So it's in safety right now. And nothing. So you can air this marker without caulking it and it will not fire. But I'm assuming once I caulk it, it should fire. Again, there's no rounds in this right now. That thing's actually pretty loud. I mean, yeah, it's free air. Um, and you can see it recocked. So I'm just gonna put the safety on here. And uh, we're gonna toss some balls in there and see what it does. So I'm gonna put two in because that's all it's gonna hold without the hopper. Oh, actually, you know, it's gonna hold more than that. Um, so because it recocked, the first ball I dropped in there isn't blocked by the bolt anymore. It might be tough to see. Do I got a flashlight here? <clears throat> see if I can spot it in there. So the first ball, yeah, of course. Look at this. Well, it's a snap on light and it's time to take it back for a refund. Uh, so the ball's in there. No hopper. So it looks like we've got room for another one. So we're gonna put three in there. So without no hopper, I can get three rounds in there. Uh, and let's chrono these. I'm very curious. So these are eight gram jewels in a very loose six eight eight six nine barrel with stock velocity. Okay, safety's off.
Okay, three balls is too many. <laughs> a 164. <clears throat> I'll add those uh, number, jewel numbers in after the fact here. I'm just going to put this ball back in my pocket here. Well, actually, now I can put it back in. So, no hopper. It looks like uh, two balls is safe. Three, it's spitting one out the top here, which obviously wouldn't happen if you had a tube on there, feed tube or a hopper. So let's fire a couple more, just to get a, make sure that we got a consistent average here. One fifty-eight. Jeez, I hope I'm on camera. One fifty-eight. Let's do a couple more, just to make sure, because <clears throat> I mean, this I'm green to this marker big time. It's been many moons since I uh, shot any blowback markers. Okay, so two more in there, and then we're gonna call it on this. One fifty-eight. There's one thing she's consistent. 156. I don't know how many rounds that was. What? Uh, six? This mark, this was charged to 3,000. I think that was eight shots. I mean, this is a little tank. This is a 9CI tank. It looks like it burned about, or just under 2,500, so probably 2,300. Wouldn't say it's efficient at all, but. Neither are any of our other mag-fed options, especially when you go to VKS air chambers or you start uh, modifying the MC, uh, sorry, MC, M17 heat core. Um, starts to get a little thirsty. So, you know, um, I did bring the Allen wrench out. Let me just, let's try and sling this video together a little longer. Based on me putting Allen wrenches into the velocity screw here, I've determined this is a metric marker. A three millimeter Allen wrench uh, is what fits the velocity adjuster. So clockwise is adjust velocity up, counterclockwise velocity down. So. I don't know how many is in here, but let's just say, I don't know. I mean, who wants to adjust it in one, right? I'm going to go three in. Three full turns. So we'll go one, two, three. That's three full turns in. Same tank, same projectiles, same barrel. Put two in, Grimberg Jewels. We're at 158. <laughs> 168. I didn't like that one up. Didn't like two in there this time. So definitely gonna need a hopper on there. So we're up 10 FPS. We'll do one more and we'll wind it some more. One sixty-four. So I would say three turns. Eh, it needs more turns. We'll go three more. Now our tank. We're at two thousand now. So we still got plenty in there, air in there. Um, for some of you that don't know, <clears throat> your output tank output sort of determines when your shots will start to uh, lose velocity significantly. I mean, they are going to lose velocity from right from the get-go. So when your tank's full at 3,000 PSI, and say you have an 800 PSI output bottle, they are going to be a little bit hotter when your tank is full. But generally speaking, they won't start really dropping or diving in velocity until you reach the output pressure of your tank. So 
from 3,000 to 800, your shot should stay reasonably consistent. But once you hit that threshold of your output of your tank, your shots are going to nosedive. You're still going to get probably, well, I, I couldn't even guess, but you're going to get many more shots even after you drop below the output of your tank. But they're gonna, they're gonna, they're gonna suck big time. Um, okay, let's do three more turns on this bad boy. You know, I keep putting on safe, which is a good idea, but I mean, there's nothing in this anyways. I really need to get something for that. One, two, three. So that's six full turns from factory. We're just going to do single shots now since it seems like it wants to spit them out the top. Um, we went up about 10 first time from 158. 170. Up about 12, but I'm going to say. So every three turns, and we're just gonna throw it out there and say it's 10 FPS. Let's do one more. <laughs> 172 is a little better. 114. Well, maybe we can round that up a little bit more. So six turns from out of the box. We're at 172 with an eight gram projectile. And Still got plenty of air in there. Seemed like that initial 3,000 it fell fast from, but I don't know we're still we're still above three we're still above 2,000 there. <clears throat> so let's wind her up some more. We'll try three. I don't know. You look down there. Looks like that velocity screw is getting pretty far down there. We're gonna go slow from now, just in case. So I'll go. One, that's one. So I can hear, I heard the spring kind of binding a little more. So one. Two. Do we go for three? Fuck yeah. Yeah, that's three turns. We are a total of nine turns now from the out of the box setting. Still got over 2000 PSI in here. Now, those last two turns, I can hear the spring really winding up in there. Now, I don't know the limit of this. So, I mean, you know, like the FSC, or the M17 when people say, well, I, I tight my velocity and then it got tight. Well, there's much more after it gets tight. So it's starting to get tight now. And I don't want to break this thing just yet. I need more videos before that happens. So I might just stop there, but we're nine turns now. Let's see what it does. This thing hits 200. On an 825 PSI bottle, I mean, that's going to be pretty good. 176. Didn't quite jump up as high there this time. So it kind of tells me that spring's probably getting close to just being non-functional in there 176 let's do one more these are all eight grams by the way 176 <clears throat> all right well I think we're going to call it for this video. 
I would like to know more about before I just keep cranking it. I know you guys would love to see me break it, but uh, of all the, the spare parts I have right now, I don't have springs for this yet. Um, so I don't want to make it non-functional just yet. But I should show you. Okay, so now we fired off that round. Let's see how this thing degasses because every marker seems to be a little bit different. So it's fired, the bolt cycled and, and, and did lock back. So it's ready to fire again. I'm gonna turn the air off with my ASA, my GOG. I expect there'll be at least one shell left in here. Now, I mean, it's tough. Okay, so the bolt's cocked, you can tell, because normally it's forward against that. So let's see what it does here. It airs off, but it did recock. It recocked again. Double checking that I did shut it off. It is off, so that's two shots. Third shot. There we go. Now you can see it did not recock. So, airing this off, I get three more shots out of it. Something to be uh, mindful of if you're waving it around in your garage and you got lots of windows and stuff. Because uh, uh, I tend to find that's probably when the accidents uh, happen the most is when you think it's safe. These aren't firearms. Air gets trapped in these systems and you just have to be careful, know your marker, understand it. And uh, until the next video, maybe CO2 next. Maybe I'll wind this some more. We'll have to wait and see. Okay guys, see ya.